And good morning. good morning. Welcome to our service and welcome to those who are watching us online. We're glad you've joined us. And our service begins with the penitential order on page 319 with the opening sentence. And for the last time, since next week is Palm Sunday, today we will be doing the Decalogue once more and with the sung responses. Um, reminder that we kneel for that. Bless the Lord, who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts. We beseech thee. We're now on page 320. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled against him. Let us then renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will 
and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest, and desire that which thou dost promise, that so among the sundry and manifold changes of the world our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In our first reading, the prophet has a vision of the bones of a dead and hopeless people being restored to new life in their homeland. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out of, by the spirit of the law, Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were many li lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to the, these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. You shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And he said, Our bones, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Using your bulletin, please join me in reading Psalm 130 responsively. 
Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore, you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Lord, O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. In our second lesson, Paul draws a contrast between minds dominated by fleshly and worldly things and those in whom Christ lives and are set on the spirit. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord Christ. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after he, having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews are, were just now trying to stone you. Are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus was, has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was merely referring to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go, that we might die with him. Then Jesus, when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and said to him, While Mary stayed at home, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in her, the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take the stone away. Take away the stone. Jesus, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing there, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, Lord.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It must have been about 20 years ago or more, but I can remember it like it happened yesterday. It was early in the morning, one day during the week, about 5 a.m., when my dog started barking. I woke up and I could see headlights shining out in my driveway through the bathroom window. I got up, I quickly dressed, turned on the outside lights and went out to see what was going on. It was one of my neighbors. She was heading to work, she was a nurse, and she had gotten as far as my house and had turned into my driveway and stopped. She was sitting there in her car and she told me that she was having a stroke and would I please go and call the emergency crew. I ran back inside, I called 911, I told the operator the situation and that I needed an ambulance. I went back outside to be with her while we waited. Now you need to understand that I lived on the same road as the rescue squad and the rescue squad building was four miles from my house. 15 minutes went by, then 20. And no sound of a siren, no flashing lights in the distance of a squad unit heading my way. I began feeling very anxious and a sense of urgency as I could tell that she was getting worse. I went back inside and I called again. This time I was told that I was really calling at an inconvenient time and that no one was at the squad building and that the unit was now actually coming from 18 miles away in the morning fog. You see, it was a volunteer squad and many of the people who worked with the squad also worked full-time jobs and it was shift work. And they were either on their way going to work or they were on their way home from work. But the waiting seemed un bearable. Now, that's where I stopped, but people at 8 o'clock congregation after church kept saying, so what happened? So I'm going to add that in, this little footnote. She did, she, she did recover. She did have impairments um, to um, her walking and her use of her left arm, but she recovered and she's um, living in a retirement home now. But so back to the sermon. In our gospel, we find a family experiencing a crisis and that same sense of urgency. Lazarus, a close friend of Jesus, had fallen gravely ill and his sisters sent word to Jesus to come quickly and heal him. Jesus was told that Lazarus was sick and would probably die. Lord, he whom you love is ill. Certain, certainly, you think that Jesus would drop everything that very moment and come at once to the aid of his sick friend. Jesus's, Jesus was Lazarus' last hope. Jesus had healed other people from their illnesses, had restored the blind man's sight, you know, certainly he would want to come and heal his good friend. Instead of going at once, Jesus purposely stayed where he was for two more days. I can just imagine the sisters constantly looking the, for the, over the horizon, looking for Jesus and his party to come their way. How would you feel if you or a loved one went to the emergency room and had to wait 48 hours for a doctor to show up and treat you? You'd be fuming with anger. And if a loved one died while waiting those two days for the doctor, you would be threatening a lawsuit and you would probably win. But in this story, we're given a clue that something extraordinary is about to take place. Because when Jesus heard that Lazarus was ill, he said, 
This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. By the time Jesus finally made his way to the home of Martha and Mary, their brother was indeed dead and in the tomb for four days. Now we need to realize that this gospel lesson is more than just a story about a family that's in crisis. It is about revealing the true nature of Jesus as the resurrection and the life. It's about revealing that true nature of Jesus as the resurrection and the life. Jesus and his disciples made their way to Bethany. When Martha heard that Jesus was near, she went running out to meet him. Her first words to Jesus were, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I, don't, I can't imagine her saying that calmly. I mean, I would have been furious. We sent for you. You didn't come immediately. Now he's dead. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But we find also that even in her grief and anger, we hear words also of faith. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask him. Jesus assured her, your brother will rise again. Martha agreed with Jesus, thinking he meant the last day. But that isn't what Jesus meant. Instead, he replied, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus asked Martha if she believed what he told her, and she replied, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The people who followed then Mary out to meet Jesus along with Martha were weeping and they were wailing. Jesus was deeply moved by what he saw and he openly wept as well. The people saw him weeping and said, see how he loved him? The crowd reacted sympathetically to Jesus but had no understanding of who he really was. Jesus' tears connected him with Mary and Martha's grief. His tears reveal his compassion for us in our grief and sorrows, even though he knows what the outcome will be. Jesus wanted them to know that eternal life is available to each and every one of us. Here and now. Not just in the resurrection on the last day, we do not have to wait for some distant event to receive eternal life within us. It is the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, that leads us to eternal life. What's most important in our lives is that relationship that we have with Jesus. We can live our lives as victors and not victims when we have a right relationship with Jesus our Lord. Jesus wanted Martha and Mary to realize that eternal life is a quality of life that we live here and now and not something that we have to wait for in some distant future. Finally, in raising Lazarus from the dead and calling him forth from the tomb, Jesus shows us that he has conquered death. Standing in front of that tomb, Jesus told the crowd, take away the stone, take away the stone. Martha, with her lack of confidence in Jesus' life-giving power, protested, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead four days. Jesus reminded her, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? And they removed the stone from front of the tomb. Jesus looked up to heaven and prayed to God. Jesus then cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus walked out of the tomb with his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus had performed his greatest of all signs, 
in the presence of the people so that they would believe in him. Jesus then said those liberating words, unbind him and let him go. The most amazing thing about eternal life here and now is that we can live each day in faith, no longer bound to the fear of dying. The new life that Jesus gave Lazarus was only temporary. Yes, he would one day die again. But the life that Jesus Christ offers each one of us, the life that is available to us here and now is different. It is the life that is revealed to us on Easter Sunday morning when Jesus overcame the grip of death and rose from the dead. With eternal life, we will always be with Jesus. We will live our lives knowing that Jesus has conquered death and has given us new life. That gift of new life is revealed to us in this short story. Dr. Don Webb served in the British Navy before coming to America, America to begin his ministry. Now, I'm not sure exactly the time frame when this happened, so it may have been a while ago. But he was proud to be named captain of the HMS Swither, S-W-I-T-H-A. He wanted so much to impress the crew with how wise and brave he was. His first their first assignment was to check the anchors that held the buoys in place. And the only way to do this was to send down a deep sea diver. Don, Don Webb was told that, you know, the previous captain always liked to go down first. The only problem was that he had never gone deep sea diving before and didn't know the first thing about it. But he didn't want to admit his inadequacy and he didn't want to help, ask for help, so he told his crew, well, of course, I want to go down first. I wouldn't have it any other way. So as he was suiting up with the heavy suit, the thick gloves, the leaded shoes, and the helmet, he was actually scared to death. He jumped overboard and slowly sank to the ocean floor. And on the ocean floor, he realized that he didn't know how to walk. He panicked. He fell forward, face down in the mud. And worst of all, he let go of the lifeline. He remembered what his men had said. Whatever you do, Captain, don't let go of this. If you need help, just give her a tug. So there he was. He was lying on the ocean floor, unable to move, unable to get up, and he thought to himself, this is it. This is how it all ends. And after several minutes, which must have seemed like an eternity, he then felt a gentle touch on his shoulder. The crew sensed that he had lost his lifeline and was in trouble. An experienced diver came down to save him, to pick him up, to unstick him from the mud, to give him back his lifeline, to show him how to walk and survive. Well, that is what Jesus is doing for us today. He is restoring our lifeline. He has come down and is touching us on the shoulder and lifting us up to rescue us from sin and death, giving us new life. We are rescued from above, just as that captain was. Eternal life begins here and now because we place our faith in Jesus Christ, the Lord and giver of life. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found as an insert in your bulletin. confident that with our hearts set on the glorious act of redemption revealed by God's beloved one, we receive the gift of new life. We offer our prayers and response, Kyrie eleison. That the arms of Christ will reach into our spiritual tombs, releasing us from the fires of sin and division, of death and despair and set our eyes upon the eighth day of our inheritance. Let us pray, Kyrie eleison, that the breath of God may rush into the hearts of the faithful, filling them with respect for the wisdom of their forebears and the courage to walk where their feet had never trod. Let us pray, Kyrie eleison, for the unemployed and those who live with fin financial anxiety, for children born into poverty and those whose wealth does not buy contentment, for those in troubled marriages and the lovely who suffer in and the lonely who suffer in silence, that all may be held by the risen Christ who broke through the walls of darkness. Let us pray. Kyrie eleison for the healing of our environment and for the vision to see ourselves as a global community, interdependent, economically woven, spiritually bonded, technologically linked, and physically united as a speck in the universe. Let us pray. Kyrie eleison. In thanksgiving for our life together, our persistence in listening to the divine word and our commitment to proclaim the life-giving love of God. Let us pray. Kyrie eleison. That we who celebrate this Eucharistic meal may receive the mercy of the Lamb, who shares our burdens, removes our sin, and restores us to the company of the faithful. Let us pray. Kyrie eleison that those who have died in the faith of Christ, that they may reside in paradise. Let us pray. Kyrie eleison. In the certain hope of the resurrection from the dead, let us continue our prayers. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Mark, our diocesan bishop, and in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and parishioners of St. John's, Tappahannock. Let us pray. Kyrie eleison for the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for those on our prayer list, for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. Let us pray. Kyrie eleison for those celebrating their anniversaries this week, Bill and C.N. Cawthorn, and Dave and Marilyn South, let us pray. 
Kyrie eleison. God, our Father, in your love and goodness, you have taught us to come to you in penitence with prayer, fasting, and generosity. Accept our Lenten discipline, and when we fall by our weakness, raise us up by your unfailing mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. those who are worshiping with us online. Uh, I first want to thank all of the people of the parish that were able to come out yesterday for the cleanup day and for our scout troop that came out in abundance as well. And um, so take a look around if you weren't here yesterday and see how wonderful the grounds of the church and the cemetery look today. It's beautiful. And for those who are watching online, I wish you could see it because they did a great job. Um, and we are also thankful for um, Ellen and, and Scott who fixed lunch for us, um, for the people who were working. I was working, but I was working in the office, not manually. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, let's see. On Wednesday morning this week is the Wednesday morning Eucharist at 9.30 in the chapel. Um, looking for, uh, also, there are forms in the narthex um, for making Easter lily donations, um, please get them in as soon as you can. Um, or if you're watching online and want to give a lily, you can call the office and mail a check. Um, then um, also, our Boy Scout troop is going to be having a barbecue um, later next month. Um, it will be, you know, come by, pick it up. But the bulletin board inside the parish hall has the flyer about it, and then it has a sign-up sheet. The tickets are $30, but the meal feeds four. Um, if you've been around in years past, it's an incredible meal, and so worth the $30. And so if you sign up and leave your phone number, um, then the person representative from the Boy Scouts will give you a call and make sure that she gets the information she needs and for the ticket, to give you a ticket. Um, then next Sunday is Palm Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion. So as you come in, um, I want you to be aware that, you know, you may end up getting a blue folder, um, or, or you, or are you getting no, that? It's all yours. It's all mine. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> um, you may get a blue folder and, um, cause there are 18 parts to the Passion. Um, and most of them are very, very short individual lines. And um, they are highlighted, and so you don't have to think about it. You just follow through the passion as it's being read, and when you get to a line that's highlighted in yellow, you read that line out loud, and then you're done. Um, um, others of us have to go on and on and on. Um, and so that will make it much easier for us and make it come alive in a way that just having one person stand up and read it will, you know, get kind of, it's, because it's like 17, 18 minutes long. Um, we've already pre-recorded it so that the people online will be able to hear it clearly, um, but we will still be doing it live here in the church. Um, also, because of that, you know, you don't have to listen to a sermon, um, because on Palm Sunday, I always give you all a break and myself a break because I think the passion stands on its own and I don't want to risk taking away from it. Um, so 
And then a quick rundown for Holy Week, because we got to remember, um, that's coming up quickly in two weeks. Um, Monday, Thursday, 6 p.m. is the Eucharist and the stripping of the altar. Good Friday noon is the liturgy for Good Friday, followed by Stations of the Cross. And then, on, importantly, then on Easter Sunday, the first service is at 6 a.m., at 6 a.m., it is the Easter Vigil. There is no 8 o'clock service. And if you show up for at 10.30 for the Easter service, you will be a half an hour late. So Easter, the main service is at 10 a.m., and the Easter Vigil is at 6 a.m. So those are the two times for Easter Day. Um, otherwise, it's the normal schedule. Have I covered everything? I think so. <laughs> All right. Yes. Huh? Sure. You're welcome. Um, we always can use people's prayers, and we thank you for them. Let us now ascribe unto the Lord the honor. Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's right. Thank you very much. <laughs> there was another one. Um, because next Sunday's Palm Sunday and the next Sunday's Easter, we have the, our parish nurses have moved up the taking of blood pressures um, to today. So any of you here in the congregation who wish to have your blood pressure checked, um, please, after the service, go to the library and um, you'll be able to have your blood pressure checked. Also, please join us for refreshments in the parish hall if you can. Now, okay, <laughs> let us now ascribe unto the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. God of our journey, as we walk with you on your path of obedience, 
sustain us on our way and lead us to your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is neat and right so to do. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, who dost bid thy faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by thy word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which thou hast prepared for those who love thee. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy, All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. <coughs> Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and, sanct and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we in all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ keep you in everlasting life, the body of our Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life.
Lord Jesus Christ, who has taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for thee. Give us the will to be the servants of others, as thou wast service of, servant of all, who gavest up thy life and didst die for us, yet livest and reignest now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. God, who from the death of sin raised you to new life in Christ, keep you from, fall, from falling and set you in the presence of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs> Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.